was working on my tabernacle, my sukkah again. I feel like the first video I did, I almost felt convicted. Because like, yeah, you just throw it up because you have to do it. It's going to fall over. It's a, it's a rotted shack, I called it. Uh, but I even said, like, within that, that, like, you know, you still have to try. And I was just reminded of that yesterday. I got to, took all the cord off that I was trying to tie it together with. It's just a terrible. Some extra boards. I mean, it still doesn't look great, but it's reinforced. It's not gonna fall over now. Well, wind is crazy. Now life is crazy. We're saying, <laughs> just like the wind is crazy, life is crazy. Anything can happen. So you, you want to build. You want to build strong. And uh, I had a, started a series with my other channel called Exile Strong. The whole premise is, yeah, you know, like life's gonna end, but we still need to take care of our bodies strong physically and spiritually because for the rough times for when God needs us to, when he wants to use us uh, this, this, I was just convicted about that yesterday repairing my sukkah making sure it can stand because it, it sometimes seems pointless and you become a bit of a fatalist like you know well everything's going to be destroyed there's going to be a renewed earth like why well, even try in this life yeah, well, you're not, you're not supposed to try for the wrong things. And an example comes to mind involving Sukkot that I thought about to share. And a little known historical character called Alexander Janaeus. Now, there's a lot of other stories about this guy. And he lived, I think it was around 90 uh, BC, so 90 years before Christ was born. And he's setting up the game. I mean, he was Jewish, and he was from the, the Sadducean line. And he was one of the weird guys who was high priest, but also king. And I quoted from Zechariah last video. And Joshua, the high priest there, which Joshua, you know, God is salvation. And a lot of people think that's Joshua is Yehoshua. Maybe Yeshua was a shortened version of that, so you know, Christ's name could have actually been Joshua. Right? We don't know. Um, I say Jesus. You know, problem with Jesus. <laughs> um, I say Yeshua. I don't have a problem with that. A lot of people get really crazy about it. It's got to be Yehoshua. No, no, no. What do they say? Yeah, Yeshua. Yahush. Yeah. I don't know how. I don't even know how you say it. <laughs> um, I don't, know how, I don't know where they drive that from, but they that's how it has to be said. I'm getting off track here. Um, but anyways, Joshua and Zechariah is given a crown. It's not just a, like a high priestly garment, but he's also given this crown. And it's this idea that, okay, there is going to be this king priest, the Mount Kisadek. And, you know, Jesus fulfills that role. Um, so now we have this Alexander Perneus guy. He's... Under the Hasmoneans, they, they kind of defeated the, the Seleucids, Antiochus Epiphanes, they pushed them back, re secured the, the, the Holy Land, Israel. And, you know, he's feeling pretty good about himself. He's subjugated the Edomites, he's kind of forcing a lot of people to obey not just Torah, but like Jewish law. Judaism was kind of being created, even though the Talmud wasn't really written for a good 200 years to 300 years at that point and, you know they still had a lot of these oral traditions which Paul talks about so on Sukkot don't quote me on the year I told you it was around 90 uh, he there's a tradition of pouring a water libation on the altar before you would do the sacrifices there was a wine they pour wine and water libation ceremony. I think it was from the Pool of Slow. They'd carry it. Recently they did this. There was like a video of them a couple years back. Um, they, they have like a makeshift altar and they, they kind of perform this ceremony. It's the first time it's been done in like a good 2,000 years. But it was a tra tradition they would do. Um, might be commanded actually. I'm not sure. I'll give you could uh, fact check me on that because sometimes they, they would pour water or wine on the altar and offer a nice savor. You know, but it's also to cleanse the altar, purify the altar for Sukkot. Um, Sukkot is 
one of the, the feasts where the most sacrifices are done out of all the other pilgrim feasts and everything like that. So he doesn't pour the water on the altar. That's right, I remember digging into this. Okay, there there is precedent. <laughs> I remember, there is precedent for uh, pouring the water on the altar. Um, that I read a scholar the article from a Jewish gentleman who wasn't even a Christian. So I, I mean, he didn't have a dog in this fight. But yes, they were supposed to do that because he didn't. And he was thinking it was just a tradition or maybe he was trying to point to something else. He poured the water, libation, out at his feet. Which made the, the Pharisees were there were around at this time had these kind of two divisions kind of being created even since the time of Ezra, you know, different philosophies. And the Pharisees, they ever at, at Sukkot, you wave a, a lulav. And a lulav is a, has a giant lemon like on there. It's called a citron. Some name for it. Etrog. I think that's mispronouncing that. So this is the longest video. <laughs> this story's backstory is taking forever. But it's got willow, myrtle, citron. Das, I can't remember what happened. Das is Myrtle. There's too many different names for the same thing. It's a problem. I think just Willow, Myrtle, Citron, and Date Palms. Date Palms, yeah. So they'd combine these four species and they'd, they'd wave them in the four directions of the, of the, you know, the, the wind. And it was, it was just kind of like a prayer they would do for, for rain, like I mentioned last time. Pray for good good harvest, good rain in the coming spring season you know, after the long winter. You know, thanking God for what they got now. So they, they decided to, to pelt Mr. Alexander Janaeus, King, sorry, King, King Priest Alexander Janaeus with these, these these lemons. Not just lemons, but big lemons, remember. It's like grapefruit lemons. Uh, apparently he's fine, but he's very mad about this. And you know, kills a bunch of Pharisees. It sparks a war. Um, there's a war with the, the Pharisees. And the Pharisees actually end up begging the, the Seleucids who nearly genocided them and killed them into you know, non-existence. They're, they're like, come help us fight <laughs> this madman. Like, that's how crazy they thought he was. That's more of that story. That's, on a, that's a little Sukkot story for you. Um, of trying to create a kingdom here on earth. And that's a problem today. Even with, not, there's not really Sadducees today, but their mindset it continues to exist of uh, this, this radical Zionism. Right? Zionism for me is waiting for the New Jerusalem to come down, but be ready for it, be prepared for it. You know, I'm not going to fight and take over the Holy Land. I'm trying to set up, you know, they wanted to, like, oh, we need to set up a king priest. We need to set up this kingdom. And we need to, you know, Conquer the Edomites. Or they would have been Edomite at this time. I think I misspoke. But they're technically it's Edomites. Uh, force them. Force them to keep God's law. But nowhere in the Bible do we see that. You know, it's forcing. You know, it's a choice. You choose or you, or you choose not to. Even sometimes Christianity is like, a, well, you're going to go to hell. You're going to burn for eternity. And, and that's not a good basis to create a relationship on it's like it's like you better be my boyfriend or I'm a girlfriend you better be my girlfriend or I'm gonna I'm gonna beat you right I'm gonna slap you all the time like, okay I'll, I'll be your girlfriend but no that's not how you do a relationship so there's that fear anyways bring it back to the the point I wanted to make I know it's a very convoluted video today <laughs> Let's keep these under five minutes. This one's just... I know where I'm at time-wise because I'm on my way to, work, way to work, so I can... It's about 15 minutes, so I know I'm at least 10 minutes here. Work on yourself, you know. Maybe that suka isn't looking as good. Be strong. Try to weather the storm best as you can. You know, you're preparing for the worst. You're not trying to set up a Zion by your own merit. You want to be connected to God's plan, you know. And the best way to be connected to God's plan is to read His Word. 
He's got the plans. He's got the, the battle plan all laid out for you. So you know what's coming. You know what to prepare for. You know what to be ready for. Zachariah is a, a good book to start with there. Have a great Sukkot. I'll keep these videos going. Hope you like that little story about Alexander James. Check him out. Uh, good little history there you can read about. Probably even more that I haven't read. It's, there's a couple, a couple of very eyebrow raising events involving him. He's a very interesting character that should be talked about more.